In John chapter 21, I'm just going to read about three verses and try to give you the thought on my heart. In verse 1, the Bible says, After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias, and on this wise showed he himself. There were together Simon Peter and Thomas called Didymus, and Nathanael of Cana and Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee, and two other of his disciples. Simon Peter saith unto them, I go a fishing. And they say unto him, We also go with thee. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately, and that night they caught nothing. If read correctly, that is the first three verses of John chapter 21. Our generation has been introduced to a condition known as PTSD, or post-traumatic stress disorder. It is said to be the result of someone's life being turned upside down due to a traumatizing event. Many combat veterans have been known to suffer with this disorder. Also, there's a number of children whose parents are divorced are also said to suffer with PTSD. People who have been mentally or physically or verbally or sexually abused also are known to suffer with PTSD. Matter of fact, any time uh, minding your world gets turned upside down. You can count on it. We become a candidate right. for post-traumatic stress disorder. I read where this disorder can affect a person physically. It does so by pulling your immune system down and making it difficult to fight off any kind of disease or any type of sickness. It also is said to attack one mentally and disrupting the chemistry of your brain and causing you to have irrational thoughts. Now, I can stop right here and just say up thus far, I probably had a touch of PTSD at a few times in my life due to a traumatizing event. I just didn't realize what the title was for what I was going through. It's also said that it can weigh on a person emotionally and bring it on various stages of depression. Now, among us Baptists, a lot of times you may hear that we're too blessed to be depressed. And I'll be honest with you, that sounds good on the surface. And it may make easy preaching sometimes, but it's difficult to live. I'll be honest with you, I kind of changed my terminology over the years. I'm not too blessed to be depressed, but I am so blessed I try not to get depressed. But there's certainly been times in my life I've been so low I could have sat on a penny and dangled my feet off the end. Doctors tell us that many who suffer with PTSD have been known to revert back to their past life, trying to find some sort of stability, if you will, before their life was turned topsy-turvy. Now, I said all that this morning to say this. I believe with all my heart Simon Peter suffered somewhat with PTSD. How, do you, how can you say that, preacher? Well, notice with me again in verse number 3. The Bible says, Simon Peter saith unto them, I go a fishing. In other words, Peter wanted to go back to that old life. He wanted to go back to those old ways that, and things that he used to do and used to be beyond the pain and beyond all of the hurt and the heartache that he was currently encountering. Uh, I might as well say this. He was just simply wanting to give up. He was wanting to throw in the towel. He was wanting to quit. He said, hey, fellas, I'm going fishing. 
And I'll tell you real quick, this sitting in my thoughts, my message as far as what I have jotted down. But I'll say this, what he said had an effect on those around him. Because some of them said, hey, I think we'll go wet a hook with you. Yeah. I want to ask you a question. Have you ever felt like giving up? Sure. Have you ever felt like throwing in the towel? Sure. Have you ever felt like just quitting? And walking away from everything, and I believe if we'd be honest, all of us this morning, at some point in time, whether we verbally admitted it or not, we certainly thought it. Whether we ever spoke it, uh, there was that within us that was saying, I'll be honest with you, most preachers on Monday morning, if they're pastoring, they feel that way. Yeah. Most of the time. Evangelists, I'm not real sure of Brother Daniel, but I'm sure there's probably been a time or two that that thought's crossed the mind. Sure. Let me ask you a question this morning, if I may. Have you ever wondered why, Brother Josh, people want to quit? Why people want to give up and throw in the towel? I believe some quit because they're drawn away by the world. Right. Yeah. The bright lights. Yeah. The promise of big times. Yeah. Kind of like the prodigal that took off and went into the far country. Let me say this, he was, his heart was already out there long before his feet ever got there. Long before he ever started heading down that path, he was already there in his heart. Did you know you can sit on a church pew Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, and even during revival services, and your heart be way out yonder, somewhere else in the world. I thought about the Apostle Paul when he said to Timothy, he said, Demas has forsaken me, loving this present world. Now, I'm not trying to read into that passage, but for Paul to say that Demas has forsaken him, there had to be a time when Demas was dedicated to the cause and dedicated uh, to the work that God had put upon the life of the Apostle Paul. And no doubt, he may have been a help. He may have been a protege of the great apostle. I remember the Bible says in the Old Testament, the Bible said that Lot pitched his tent toward Sodom. Boy, he was heading in the wrong direction. Sodom was a type of the world. Sodom and, and pitched his tent toward Egypt. And that's a type of the world, a type of Sodom. I'm going to tell you, the last place you want to go is away from God. But there's people in their heart that have done so. Some are drawn away by the world. Secondly, I thought about how some, they get discouraged in the work. Yeah. They want to quit. Right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the prophet Jeremiah, he got so discouraged in the work that he said in chapter 20, he said, I'm not going to say another word about him. <laughs> Have you ever been there? Sure. Yeah. Have you ever had that thought? Have you ever acted it out? Have you ever considered it? Sure at a traumatizing time in your life. Some throw in the towel and quit, not just because some are drawn away from by the world and they get discouraged in the work, but sometimes the difficulties that they encounter along the way sure. yeah. will cause them to quit. Yes, sir. Right. I'm going to tell you what, there's no discharge in the Christianity. Right. There's no getting out. There are getting out. A lot of times in our heart we will. But in reality, and I'll be honest, I know you've seen some as well that have turned and walked away and you may be one of them. Right. And maybe you're back now. Aren't you thankful for grace? Yeah. Let me say this about the Christian life. And as Brother Greg Phillips would say, I believe you'll say amen or not, brethren. The Christian life is not for sissies. Christian life is not for the faint of heart. I mean, I wish I could tell you, as I said uh, the other evening, that everything's always going to be blue skies and birds are singing and the roses are, are going to be in bloom. But sometimes the storm clouds arise. Sometimes. The valleys are seen so long and sometimes the mountains seem so high and you just want to give up. You just want to throw in the towel and you just want to quit. Amen. Oh, my soul. In the days and the weeks ahead, 
I don't know as far as our health, we may lose it, we may lose loved ones, we may lose possessions, we may lose some of the freedoms that we have, but let me say this, don't quit. Listen, it's always, just always remember this if you forget anything else. It's important to start right, but it's equally important to stay right and to finish right. In John chapter number 6 and in verse number 66, the Bible says that from that time many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Verse 67, the Bible says, Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will you also go away? Many of his disciples had turned and walked away. He had taught a difficult thing. Boy, he lost the whole congregation. One message. He looks over at his 12 and said, Will you also quit? Will you also throw in the towel? Will you also go away? Well, on this Sunday morning, during Sunday school hour, let me give you just three or four reasons as to why uh, there's no reason for you and I to quit. There's no reason for you and I to throw in the towel and lay down. Notice with me first of all, we can't quit because the morning's coming. How you know preacher, look with me in verse 4 of this chapter. The Bible says, but when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore. Hey, morning's a coming. There's no reason to quit. Hey, it may be heartaches and it may be struggles and there's going to be valleys and there's going to be some very difficult times and calamities in our life. But blessed be the name of God, mornings are coming. Oh, listen, this isn't it a wonderful time whenever it's been night and you've been going through maybe a heartache and a very difficult moment in your life or going through a valley and then all of a sudden out of nowhere the sun begins to shine in the gable end of your soul. I mean, praise God, the Holy Ghost just sits down and squeezes you real tight and loves on you real good. Hey, listen, there's no reason to quit. There's no reason to give up. There's no reason to even consider Consider throwing in the towel, Brother Phil, because morning's coming. Boy, I tell you, there's nothing like waking up in the morning after a long night of sleeplessness. Now, listen, normally I make it on three or four hours of sleep, Miss Cindy, I'll tell you that. But you know what? Here the last several days since we've been up here in the good fields of Florence, Kentucky, do you realize and do you know I've slept eight or nine hours? Praise God, I won't have to sleep a whole week when we get off. We're going on vacation down to Pigeon Forge next week. And when I get back, I won't even have to lay down and take a nap. I can just stay up a while and enjoy the things of God. Hey, do you realize one day in our life, mornings are coming? It ain't always going to be nighttime, sir. It's not always going to be dark. It's not always going to be deep and long valleys. Hey, there's a morning coming. Boy, can't you just anticipate the sun is shining and the gable into your soul again? Well, I can't wait. Oh, notice something else I see here. Not only is the morning, let, let me give you this so I got it jotted down. I got it, let me give it to you. There's a song I love, I was singing it going out of the motel. Oh yeah, let me tell you this. Some glad morning when this life is o'er, I'll fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. I'll fly, y'all sing it with me, help me. I'll fly away, oh glory. I'll fly away in the morning when I die. Hallelujah, by and by. I'll fly away. 
Listen, the Lord, the Bible said, Lord himself's going to descend from heaven with a shout. He's coming to get us with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God and the dead in Christ to rise first and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort you one another. Mornings are coming. Somebody holler, mornings are coming. Mornings are coming. The sun's going to shine again. You can count on it, sir. I'll notice something else with me. Not only can we not quit because there's the morning that's coming, but secondly, we can't quit because there's a miracle right around the corner. Hey, you know, preacher, well, look with me if you will. In verse number 6. In verse 6, the Bible says, And he said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. They cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it. For the multitude of fishes. That's a pretty good miracle, wasn't it? Let me give you another miracle you can count on. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51, Paul said, Behold, in other words, looky, looky, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in a moment. In the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. Hey, that's a pretty good miracle, isn't it? <laughs> There's a miracle right around the corner. These old bodies of ours, believe it or not, Brother Daniel, you're a young man, but over the years, Brother Jordan, your body will wear out just a tad, son. And I can't move around, can't get about quite as well as I could and back when I was 40. I'm 60 now, but I don't even know how I'm supposed to feel at 60. So I try to feel like I'm 40. And to be honest with you, Miss Sidney, sometimes when I'm trying to feel like 40, my body reminds me that I'm 60. Oh, but listen, there's going to come a day that when I see him, I'm going to be like him. For I'll see him as he is. Don't you know we'll move around with a little spring in our step? Don't you know we'll walk about and have a song in our mouth and praise unto our God? Hey, we won't know what 60 is. We won't know what 90 is. We won't, we won't know what 120 is. We're just going to be like him. That's a pretty good miracle. Oh, the greatest miracle I ever experienced was when Jesus saved me. Hey, listen, the greatest miracle you'll ever behold with your eyes on this side of eternity is to get yourself a mirror and look into it and see yourself and take a glance back as you once were and as you are now. Do you know in the eyes of God... We're righteous. We're justified. We're holy. We've been born again again. Boy, aren't you glad? It's good to be saved, Brother Josh, but it's also equally as good to know you're saved. And I'm glad to report to you on this Sunday morning. Praise God, if you're saved, you ought to notify yourself that I know that I know that my no knows that I know uh, that I'm saved. It's a miracle taking place in our life. Plus, that's another reason we can't quit. Let me give you something else real quick if I get through it. Not only can we not quit because the morning that's coming, because the miracle that's around the corner, but praise God, we can't quit thirdly because of the meal that he's cooked. He's cooked us a meal. How you know, preacher? I try to stay in the text. Look with me in verse number 12. Bible says, Jesus saith unto them, Come and dine. He said, Come and dine. I believe he done the cooking. And none of the disciples thus ask him, Who art thou, knowing that it was the Lord? And Jesus then cometh and taketh bread <clears throat> and giveth them <clears throat> and fish likewise. Do you know we're going to a meal? <laughs> He's cooked us a meal. And boy, it's hard to fathom that. 
that one day the Lord's going to oh, I need me a, I need me a handkerchief right quick that one day the Lord is going to take a handkerchief like they're doing in their fancy restaurants I tell you right now they ain't never seen a spread like we're going to Amen. but he's going to take put that napkin right there over it on him. and we're going to be sitting there at the marriage supper oh I need me a plate glory to God we're going to be sitting at the marriage supper and here he comes and, and you're going to look and see that wound in his hand he gonna come and he gonna serve us. You gonna look see that one? We're right there in his hand. Oh, that's hey, good, brother. Have you ever wondered at the marriage supper of the Lamb? Who you gonna be sitting beside? Now listen, I'm six down from we're from North and South Carolina. We're on the border. We travel both. We we're not ashamed to be from either one. We live over in South and Pastor in North. Or Pastor right now, but anyhow. Have you ever wondered who you're going to be sitting beside? I mean, right in the midst of the Lord handing you. And all of a sudden, Brother Jordan, you look over there and you realize, well, this is the Apostle Paul. Woo. And Paul says, hi. Yeah. <laughs> Jordan goes, whoa. <laughs> on that day, intellect won't matter. Yeah, right. You know what's going to matter on that day? It's going to be all about him. Yeah. Handing you and letting you see that one right there. He passes it. Boy, can you imagine? Amen. Well, glory. <laughs> hey, there's a meal. No reason to get all upset and kick out and quit. Right. There's a meal that he's cooked. And you know he's, who he's cooked it for? Yeah. You and I, yeah. blood washed, yeah. born again, yeah. whose name yeah. is written in the book of life, Lamb's book of life. Have hey, you ever wondered what your new name's going to be? I don't know what mine's going to be. But, brother, I hope it might be cheap. <laughs> but that meal that he's cooked, boy, it just stirs me up to think about it, Brother Doug. One day, listen, we're going to look over there, and you may be sitting right beside Simon Peter. Think of that. Mm. Mm. Might look over there, praise God, and there sits old David. Mm. What did that? You know who I'd love to be sitting beside? Mephibosheth. Yeah. Oh, I'd love to be sat right beside old Mephibosheth. Yeah. I can hear him now. I used to be crippled. I'll say me too. I used to be down in Lodibar. I'll say me too. I used to be down there wondering what did he pastor? I say, me too. But one day the king brought me to the house and I will say, me too. Yeah. What a meal. Yeah. Well, watch this. Not only can we not quit because morning coming. Not only because there's a miracle right around the corner and there's a meal that's been cooked. But I'm going to give you this and I'll be done and get out of the way. Lastly, we can't quit because of the meeting that we ought to consider. Right. A meeting. Yeah, notice with me, if you will, again, verse 15. The Bible says, so when they had dined, Jesus saith to Simon Peter, kind of got him off to the side, had a little meeting, and we know the context there. We know the, of how Peter had denied him three times. And the Lord said, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He said, Lord, you know I love you. Well, then feed my sheep. We know the story. But do you realize one day, it's going to be, I can't have I have an imagination. Uh, the older I get, I imagine a lot. And uh, you can't, you, you say, well, preacher, it may not be in the book. Well, it may not, but I think God's give us a mind to imagine things sometimes. Sure. So I can imagine for just a moment at that meeting, nobody there but he and I. <laughs> oh, and he's just going to love on all of us individually. Sure. I mean, can you imagine sitting down beside the Savior? And Brother Michael Jordan, I love your name. Jordan with Jackson too. Sorry, Brother Michael Jackson. I love his name. Michael Jordan's good too, but anyhow. Can you imagine sitting there one-on-one -on -one 
Brother Michael with the Savior. And he just begins to maybe take you back down memory lane to some times in your life oh, where nobody knew it but you did that you wanted to quit. Oh, aren't you glad you didn't? Aren't you glad you hung in there? No matter how hard, no matter how difficult, Miss Sidney one day just to sit down and look at him. And him look at you. Those eyes, those dove eyes. He that is all together lovely. No flaws in him. I get all these, I call them age spots. Some of you ladies cover yours up with makeup. I have borrowed some Miss Cindy's and hit one or two on my face a time or two. I'll just tell you. The older you get, you have those. But you know one day we'll not have any age spots. And we're going to behold him who is fair than 10,000. We're going to look on him who, again, is altogether lovely, who gave his life for mine and your sin, who was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, praise God, we're sitting down. Brother Josh had a meeting. One on one. You won't have to do no confession then, brother. I know you don't know it now either. You know what I'm saying. There's a meeting. Might as well anticipate it. You can count on it. Boy, once we get it through that judgment, oh, how. I'm not looking forward to judgment seat. Now, I'll go ahead and tell you. I don't want to kill my message, but I'm just not looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to getting through it. And the Bible says when we see him, we'll be like him. For we'll see him as he is. I'm going to be honest with you, and this is no, I'm not throwing anything off on a Jew. I, I love the Jewish people. But I'm glad the Bible says that he came unto his own and his own received him not. Because if they hadn't, we'd been in a mess. But he said, to as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God. And because we're a son of God, we're going to get in sat down beside the Father. There's sometimes, Allie and I, we just go one on one. We went out and done a little crowding around in Florence, Kentucky. See, she ain't never seen a water tower that says Florence, y'all. <laughs> Sometimes we just get out and we talk. And we have one-on-one -on -one conversation. And you know, some things she tells me, I kind of chuckle at. And some things I really lay to heart. Little Bella, she says some important things sometimes. But you know anything Allie could say to me or anybody with the intellect, the brother uh, Jordan here could say to me, it won't compare right. to that day, Brother Waters, yeah. when we sat down one-on-one -on -one with him. Yeah. And he just looks over and says, hello. Yeah. Hey. Amen. Yeah. Up here it might be high. <laughs> but listen, the whole point of this message is to encourage you. Mm -hmm. Brother Aaron, we can't quit. Yeah. Oh, there's times... There's times we want to give up. Sure. Just might well be honest. There's been some days we've gotten weary in well doing. Sure. Weary from the battle. Yeah. Weary in the trials. Weary in the work. Sure. Weary in trying to do what's right. And there's been some times we wanted to lay it all down. But yeah. praise God we can't. Yeah. He's been too good to us. Yeah. He's blessed you individually. Yeah. He's blessed this church. Yeah. I mean, just look around. Yeah. I remember when we were in the other building, the old building, the, the small building, and this sister came. She'd got saved. M Melissa had a week before, and she comes. She's never left. Yeah. There's an attraction. Hey, I want to tell you, there's an attraction to a meeting place. There's an attraction to where you can sit down and fellowship and have that one-on-one -on -one conversation. Oh, and I love it, but I'll tell you, it will not compare to what we're going to. Pastor, if you'll come, if you'll stand to your feet, church, heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Don't quit. Don't give up. Smile when you don't feel like smiling. Stay, have stickability when you feel like turning and walking away. Stay faithful when you feel like quitting. Hang in there. Trust Him. He'll never let you down. 
He'll always be there with you and always there for you. Whatever your need is, I'm turning it over to the pastor. You just mind him. <laughs>